the place of gladness, the Garden of Eden, the place of gladness, the Garden of Eden, we are going to be concentrating much of our reading from the book of Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 to 3. We are also going to be reading Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 to 35. Isaiah 51, verse 1 to 3, and Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 to 35. But we are not going to be reading those scriptures now. I just wanted you to know, uh, as we are going to be cruising, I want you to take note of those two scriptures, because that is where we are going to be uh, referring much of our, our teaching or our sermon. One thing that I want you to know, brethren, um, which forms the, 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 the very uh, pivotal role of this message that we are preaching, which has been laid in the Old Testament and which we continue also to emphasize, it is the issue of the blood. And this issue of the blood um, is very, very integral. In the, in the preaching of the message, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, I was reading the book of Ezekiel, chapter 4. Those of you who are familiar with the book of Ezekiel, you will remember that chapter 4 of the book of Ezekiel is one of the chapters that shocked me when I first attended uh, sermons in Jesus' Revelation Ministries when our mother was preaching Bagomba, for the first time to also have an appreciation of how serving God is or the stakes that you should also uh, expect as a servant of God. Those who served the Lord, especially in the Old Testament, they served the Lord with uh, a commitment and a, a level of humility that when I always refer to such scriptures like, like Ezekiel chapter 4, I start to uh, ask myself a question. Will I save God with humility and submission and commitment the way the prophets in the Old Testament lived, mm. the way Abraham lived, the way people like Noah lived, what kind of a servant I am? Those are the questions that I will ask myself. So we are not going to be reading the whole of Ezekiel chapter 4, but I want you to know that the Lord instructed Ezekiel to prophesy to the, to the nation of, 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 of Israel, to the house of Judah. And um, for your own information, Ezekiel was not just a prophet, he was also a priest. You can find that from the, the first chapter, verse number 23, you realize that Ezekiel himself, he was also a priest. So in Ezekiel chapter 4, where I am referring, the Lord had instructed Ezekiel to prophesy. But he was not just to prophesy by, by just uttering words to the nation of, of Israel, to the house of Judah. No, he was instructed by the Lord to follow and adhere to very strict instruction. Some of the instructions, they included him to, to bake bread, a cake, using human dung. <laughs> That's what mm. the scripture says. As, as, as also part of prophecy, you want to be a servant of God. You desire to become a servant of God. Go and read what the other people who served the Lord lived. Mm. So the scripture that I want, I just want us to read from uh, Ezekiel chapter 4 is verse number 14, where Ezekiel, as a priest and as a prophet, he also uh, had a petition to the Lord to say, mm. Ah, So, these are the words that Ezekiel said in verse 14, but you can read from verse number 1 of chapter 4 and you will discover what I, 
I am telling you or what I am, I am teaching you right now. And the emphasis there is the, the, the level of preparedness that the, the, the early prophets, the, the prophets of old, they head towards serving God. Verse 14, Ezekiel chapter 4. Then said I, This is what Ezekiel said after God's instruction. Yes. Oh Lord, behold, my soul has not been polluted. Ah, Lord God. Yes. For from my youth up yes. even till now have yes. I not eaten of that which died of itself. Yes. Or is torn in pieces. Yes. Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. So this is what he said. So in verse number 15, going forward, what did the Lord say? Then he said unto me, Yes. Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for men's dung. Yes. And thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. So you see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the yeah, Lord yeah, said, yeah. In the place of men's dung, I have now given you cow's dung. <laughs> Go and prepare bread that you are going to be eating. It was not for one day. Go and read you the, the whole chapter. It was for the whole year. Ezekiel eating bread mm. prepared from cows done. Mm. But God had initially said, I want you to do it in the, in the presence of the whole nation of Israel. Go and take men's dung mm. and prepare bread with men's dung and eat in their presence so that they may know that they are going to be besieged. They are going to go under siege. Mm -hmm. This is the message that I want you to prophesy to, to these people. But I like verse number 14 because uh, as a priest, Ezekiel, he said, no, 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 Lord, ever since I was a youth, mm -hmm. I have never eaten anything that died of itself mm -hmm. or is torn in pieces. Yes. Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Mm. This issue of man's dung, you have gone too far for me, O oh Lord. Mm. And the Lord heeded to Ezekiel's the, the, the petition. And instead of man's dung, he gave him cow's dung. Mm. But there's something about the animal that died of itself, which Ezekiel was highlighting to the Lord. I've never eaten anything that died of itself from my youth. And if you'd go to scriptures like Leviticus chapter 22 from verse number 8, but again, if you read that chapter, you will see that this chapter was, the Lord was speaking to Aaron and his sons. He was speaking to the high priest and the sons of the high priest. But let's just go to verse number 8 and hear what further instruction was given to the house of the priests as, containing, as concerning to uh, eating flesh or eating an animal that died of itself. So I first read God, 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 I Leviticus chapter 22 verse number 8. That which died of itself or is torn with beast, yes. he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. Yes. I am the Lord. So I am the Lord. Aaron and his sons, they are not allowed to eat any animal mm -hmm. that died of itself mm -hmm. or something that is torn with beasts. Mm -hmm. He must not eat that. And the scripture ends by saying, I am the Lord. Yes. The priests should never defile themselves by eating that which died of itself. And he repeated the same instruction now to the house of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 21. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse number 21. Yes, you shall not eat of anything that died of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger. Give it to the stranger. That is in thy gates. Yes. That he may eat it. Yes. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. Sell it to an alien, yes. For thou art an holy people unto you the Lord. You are a holy people unto the Lord thy, thy God. God. Thou shalt not seed a kid in his mouth, in his mother's milk. You see now. So this is what we are getting. So when, when Ezekiel was 
saying, I have not done this since my youth. He was obeying, he was following, he was in obedience to the law that was given. Uh, we have read the scriptures, and this is what he was saying. So the question is, why, why the Lord was forbidding the nation of Israel to eat of the animal that died of itself? What, what is the concern of the Lord? Hmm. What is the concern of the Lord? So if you want to think very deeply on that question, you will realize that at the end of the day, remember I said we are going to be concentrating much on the blood. And the problem with an animal that died of itself, it is this lake of, uh, of, of blood. The blood. The blood. When we, when we talk about the shedding of blood, mm. the shedding of blood is what is missing from an animal that died of itself. Mm. You see, even the meat itself, those of you who grew up in the rural areas like myself, we used to enjoy this meat. Huh? Just wake up early in the morning, a, 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 a chicken is, 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 is died of itself, probably. It was bitten by a snake. Mm -hmm. You never mind. It was one thing that is very, very frightening about an animal that died of itself. It is the absence of the cause of death. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what caused this animal to die. You don't even know. And yet the Bible says, even that which is torn of beasts, you must not also partake of it. Mm -hmm. The reason is, it is because the, 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 the blood was not shed. So this issue of the blood, it continued to be very integral. The Lord appeared to have a message that he wanted to communicate mm -hmm. using the Old Testament, the... the, 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 the the Old Testament way of life, uh, the animals that they were allowed to eat. Yes. Probably, Pastor, if we go to Leviticus chapter 17 and, and let's see what instruction was given to Israel, especially pertaining to the, the meat that Israel was supposed to eat. Uh, let's just read uh, from verse number 11, Leviticus 17. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar. Yes. To make an atonement for your souls. Yes. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Yes. Therefore I say it unto the children of Israel. Yes. No soul of you shall eat blood. Yes. Neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you eat blood. Yes. And whatsoever men they, they be of the children of Israel. Yes. Or of the strangers that sojourn among you. Yes which hunted yes. and catcheth any beast or fowl yes. that may be eaten, yes. he shall even pour out the blood thereof yes. and cover it with dust. Yes. For it is the life of all flesh. Yes. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Yes. Therefore I say it unto the children of Israel, yes. you, shall eat the blood, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, yes. for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Yes. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. So I don't want to go much into um, the, 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 the interpretation of these scriptures. We have quite a number of these sermons that were preached, especially from Leviticus chapter 11 about the blood. And we have learned that if the blood is the life and we see the church of Israel, the Old Testament church, being instructed not to eat blood, which means they were instructed to eat the flesh, but as pertaining to the blood, it was forbidden. Mm -hmm. But the interesting scripture is where the Lord said, I want you when you catch an animal, mm -hmm. you must see, pour the blood yes. onto the ground mm -hmm. and cover it with the dust. Yes. Cover that blood with the dust. Mukaese wa uraya, toraropa, Yes. You may only eat an animal whose blood has been shed and you have actually taken the blood and poured it to the ground. You cover that blood with, 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 with the earth, with the dust. But as to that animal that you find dead, you don't know the cause of death, 
probably you have discovered that this animal was torn of the beast. Mm. You are not allowed to eat that animal. Mm. You see? The problem is the blood of that animal was not shed. The blood of that animal was not poured to the ground. It died with its blood in itself, in the flesh. There was no separation. We have not witnessed the, the shedding of the blood, the coming out of the blood. You see? So it remained a question in Israel. It remained a very, very uh, important, and the Lord was very, very uh, emphatic about it. He said, the, if you eat an animal that died of itself, you have actually defiled yourself. Mm. And where we've read Ezekiel there, he said, no, since my youth, I haven't eaten an animal that died of itself. Mm -hmm. right. And now coming to the gospel, because it is always about the gospel, yes. it is always about the message mm. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. So you will discover that uh, the kind of the gospel that we have been subjected to all this while, mm. it was a command for people to eat an animal that died of itself. Mm. Because number one, you do not know the cause of death. Number two, you have already known in some instances mm. that it is the beast that has actually torn this. Yes. So what is it, Pastor Balue, that you are going to concentrate or you are going to, to show us? What is the message then? What are you saying? So we look at all these animals that died in the Old Testament, we are going to see from the other scriptures that we are going to be reading. Yes. They were actually prophesying about the death of the Son of God. Amen. The Son of Man. Amen. And all this question of blood, yes. which was emphasized in the Old Testament, mm. that it is the blood, the blood is the life mm. of the animal. Yes. Yes. And Israel was forbidden to take blood. No wonder why. Why they failed to get the interpretation of the scriptures mm. which were supposed to give them life. Mm. And in John chapter 6, verse 63, he actually says the, the flesh profited nothing. Yes. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Yes. And he says, the words that I have spoken unto you, yes. they are spirit yes. and they and are they life. Are life. Yes. Which means when the Lord forbade Israel to eat blood, mm. he actually restricted them to get life. Yes. In other words, mm. they missed the words mm. of the Lord. Mm. Yes. The words yes. of the Lord, they represent the interpretation of the scriptures. Mm. But I just wanted you to see that. But yeah. let's talk about why he forbade Israel to eat animals that have died of themselves, okay. that have not uh, shed blood. Mm. What is it about blood that he wanted? Why was God interested in the shedding of blood? He wanted blood to come out of that animal mm. before you eat that animal. Yes. So you find there are two kinds of gospels or two kinds of messages that are preached. Of course, we may talk about the death of Christ and we may seem to be agree in agreement. Huh? You go to Roman Catholic, you see them during their so-called Easter celebration. Mm. Huh? You see them carrying the cross. They sing songs about the death of our Lord. Mm -hmm. You go to other shrines, they talk about the death of our Lord. Mm -hmm. And we are also seated here and want to talk about the death of the Lord. It appears it's the same, it's the same message. But the other message now, it, 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 is, it lacks blood yes. out of it. In fact, the animal is dead. Mm -hmm. But we do not know, we do not understand. We have no knowledge of what caused that animal to die. To die. The cause of death is very important mm -hmm. to the nation of Israel yes. for them to, to eat. Yeah. Yeah. The cause of death. That's why we always say, you may say about the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. unless if you understand what caused him to die. Mm -hmm. That's when we are going to have life now. That is the gospel that gives life. That is the gospel that is allowed the children of Israel for them to partake. Yes. But this other one now, of an animal that is dead, probably is torn of the beast. And you know the beast, it, 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 the beast is there. They represent, 
the, the, the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. They represent the devil. Remember, Revelation chapter 13, there is a beast there that is, that is spoken of. Yes. And the, the, if you find an animal that is torn of the beast, mm -hmm. which means this animal is a victim, that's why you find a, a, a doctrine or a gospel where they do not understand how our Lord died and why he died, what was the cause of his death. They treat our Lord as a victim, just mm -hmm. like this other animal, mm -hmm. which is found in the, in the, in the forest, in the yes. wilderness, yes. dead. Yes. But there are marks on this animal mm -hmm. that it succumbed to, to a beast that actually rose against this animal and, and torn and tore this, 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 this animal apart. Mm. Huh? Yes. And, and in, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, we see that our Lord was not a victim. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, he was not the victim of the beast. He was not the, the victim of the devil. The only time where people died in the hands of the devil, it was when they were found with the sin inside of them. Yes. Hmm? yes. So our Lord did not die out of sin. He, he never sinned. No. So those who preach the message that our Lord was a victim of death, when they sing songs about his death, they actually are very, very sorrowful. They mm. see him as a, 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 someone who was defenseless. Yeah. They see the Jews, the songs that they've composed. Why did the Jews do, did all these things that they did? Our Lord was vulnerable. At least there was supposed to be some form of defense. Mm. That was supposed to be on the Lord. They, they preach a message that our Lord died because of his sin. They may not say it verbally, yeah. that he died because he sinned. Mm -hmm. But when they preach a message which brings sorrow, when narrating the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. they don't preach a message of victory, mm -hmm. that by dying on the cross, he was actually preparing a, 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 a way that was going to bring victory yes. over sin. Yes. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then yes. as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, yes. he also himself likewise took part of the same. Yes. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. Yes. That is the devil. Through what? Death. Through death. Yes. He might destroy him yes. that had the power over death. Yes. That is the devil. You see. So his death it was actually a means of victory. Amen. Mm. It was not, a, 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 he was not a victim. He was not a victim. Mm. So this is the question that I always um, have been asking uh, myself when I preach the message. Yes. At the end of the day, which animal am I going to present for Israel to eat? <laughs> is it this one whose blood is shed or is this other one which is found dead? of itself. No explanation, no knowledge of what caused it to die. Yeah. Which gospel are you going to be preaching? Mm. So as we are going to come back, we are going to have a short tete a tete. A tete a tete. After this tete a tete, we are going to come back and explore this matter. Yes, welcome back and welcome back as we are continuing with uh, our sermon, the place of God, the place of gladness, the Garden of Eden. And we were just uh, observing the two kinds of Gospels. They are very important because this other Gospel, where we are going to see the shedding of blood, it is going to give us an instruction as the true nation of Israel, to, to partake of that meat, to partake of that animal, the meat of that animal. But there's one thing that is interesting unto Israel, unto the nation of Israel, they were given instruction to hunt for this animal. You see, 
They were given instruction. Those who are going to go into the wilderness to hunt. If you hunt and you catch an animal, of those animals that are allowed in the scriptures to be eaten, please make sure that you shed the blood of that animal. May you put the blood of that animal on the earth and cover it with the dust. You see? Cover it with the dust. But Israel was instructed to hunt. <laughs> so, isn't it interesting, Pastor? Oh, yes. 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 But the hunting aspect now, if you are going to look at that very closely, you will see that when you hunt an animal, mm. you will never miss, you will never fail to understand what, how this animal died. Or how this animal is going to die. Because you hunted for this animal. Yes. You, you caught this animal. Yes. And you killed the animal. You killed it yourself. You can explain. Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. If you are found eating the meat, mm. you can say, this is how we hunted yes. for this uh, uh, animal. Mm. And this is how we, 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 we actually caught this animal. Yes. And this is how we slaughtered this animal. Mm. And we actually harvested blood mm. from this animal. Mm. And this blood, we poured it to the ground. Mm. You have an explanation. Yes. Because of the hunting. But that one which died of itself, you do not have any trace. Mm. You do not have any knowledge. Mm. So why then did God instruct Israel to hunt? So the hunting, it is the following. When you hunt, you follow where the animal is going. Yes. Very closely. Yes. You monitor everything that that animal is doing. Mm -hmm. Until you come to a place where you are going to catch that animal. Mm -hmm. And then you take it to the slaughter. Yes. That is what exactly happened to our Lord. Mm -hmm. When the Lord gave Israel the law, the law of Moses, mm -hmm. it was the, the, the method by which Israel was supposed to hunt. Mm -hmm. So when God gave Israel the law, the yes. prophets, yes. he wanted Israel to observe. Huh? There is an animal that is coming. And that animal, for yeah, you yeah. to be allowed to eat the, uh, the meat from that animal, yes. you must know that this animal was not, number one, the victim of the beast. Mm. Number two, this animal did not just die for itself. Okay. It never died for itself. Mm. There is a reason, there is a cause yes. why it died. Yes. And for Israel to understand how and why this animal died, there has to be given a tracking mechanism, yes. which was the law. Amen. That is the way that Israel was supposed to hunt. Hmm. Until they've caught that animal, yes. they will really say, we know, we can explain from Genesis to Malachi, we can explain to you that indeed, <laughs> this is the animal that is allowed to be eaten. <laughs> we saw the blood. This animal is not a victim of the beast. It actually overcame the beast. Amen. The devil was overcame. Through death, mm. he died mm. for him to overcome the yes. devil. So yes. Israel was given an instrument which was going to help them to hunt. And I'm no vima in the wilderness of the scriptures, huh? mm. in the wilderness of the Old Testament laws and prophets, mm. you are going to see, you are going to be tracking this animal. <laughs> until you catch this animal and then you will understand all these things that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So Israel was given the law. Israel was given the law. Okay. So when we come as genders, we, oh, we, we, we come to at a time when our Lord has already died. Yes. Huh? yes. yes. When our, our Lord has already died and is risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. But we are narrated now we want to know how this animal died. Mm. Huh? Yes. We were not there in the law. No. So where are we going to learn? How are we going to know how this animal died? Did it die according to what the Lord has prescribed? Was it not a victim? Did it die in line with what the Lord had said? Mm. We go into the, into the law. We go into the law. Yes. What are we seeking there? We want to see and hear from Israel how they tracked this animal. This animal. Huh? 
Huh? Yes. Right from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse number 1. Yes. yes. Huh? To the book of Malachi. Malachi. Yes. And see, is it this animal that indeed we are allowed to eat? Mm. Is it the meat that we are allowed to eat? Mm. You cannot just eat meat of an animal which you do not know how it died. It died. What caused it to die? <laughs> So there seems to be a contradiction in the scriptures. And when we hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, yes. we hear him saying, I am not going to be killed. Actually, I received a commandment of the Lord. I am going to lay down my life of myself and I will take it again. Mm. Verse 17 and 18, John chapter 10. Therefore doth my father love me, yes, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. Yes. No man taketh it from me, yes, but I lay it down of myself. Yes. I have power to lay it down, yes, and I have power to take it again. Yes. This commandment have I received of my father. You see, I've actually received a commandment of my father. Mm. No man is going to kill me. Mm. Huh? I lay down my life. Of myself, I yes. do it myself. I've got power to lay down my life. Yes. And I've got power also to take it up mm. again. I received this commandment of the Lord. Mm. I received this commandment of the Lord. No one is going to kill me. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you see me dead, know that it is me who have caused that. <laughs> I have power. To lay it down. I have power to die. And I have power to, to rise from the dead. Yes. Amen. Hmm? Don't eat. So, I hope you are not going to be confused. Because this scripture is neither describing an animal that died of itself, mm -hmm. it is also not describing an animal that is torn of the beast. Mm. Hmm? <laughs> huh? yes. He is not a victim. No. Because when you die of, of the beast, you are a victim. Yes. Mm. He is saying, I am not going to die because I am a victim. No. I have power to lay down my life. Yes. And I have power to take it up. Yes. You see? I received this commandment of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I did not die because I succumbed to, to anything. No. I would do it of myself. I have got power to do it. Mm -hmm. But I like it when, when Apostle uh, Peter was preaching. Yes. In, 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 in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 uh, from verse 22. He was preaching and narrating to the house of Israel. How, like I was saying, Israel was given the set of laws and prophets to hunt <coughs> for this animal. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. When you are hunting, you are trekking. Yes. The, 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 the word hunt, it just means trek. If you are hunting an animal, you are trekking that animal so that you catch that animal. Yes. So what did they say, Apostle Peter, to the, to the house of Israel? Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, yes, Hear these words. Yes. Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. A man approved of God among you by yes. miracles and wonders and signs. Yes. Which God did by him in the midst of you. Yes. As you yourselves also know. What happened to him? Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God. Yes. You have taken. You have taken. And by wicked hands. Yes. You have crucified and slain. What happened to him? Whom God... He hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, yes. because it was not possible yes. that he should be holden of it. You see now, but what we see in Vangeli, we see Apostle Peter saying, no, 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 no. What actually happened is, remember that you men of Israel, mm -hmm. they, uh, they, you, you saw him yes. among you. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Because when you hunt, you will not just follow an animal when you lose sight of that animal. Mm -hmm. You have to first see the animal. Yes. The animal must be presented to you first. Yes. And then you begin to trace. Mm -hmm. He's saying, observe 
what Jesus did among you. Mm. Signs and wonders and miracles that he performed. Mm. You, you all know it happened in, in broad daylight when all the nation of Israel was actually of full glare of what was happening. You saw what happened. Mm -hmm. But there is a time when you caught this animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Your wicked hands yes. actually caught this animal. Yes. You killed this animal. You slain this animal. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm. But God raised him up Amen. from the dead. Amen. Yes. And this is what we are presenting. Amen. So he is not a victim. No. It was the determinate counsel of God, of the foreknowledge of God. Mm -hmm. God actually presented this animal to you. So you remember what he said in John chapter 1, verse 29. When, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, because for you to trek an animal, like I said, yes. you cannot just say, I'm hunting. There's an animal that I'm trekking before that animal is presented to you. Mm -hmm. So Jesus of Nazareth, he was presented as a lamb sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He was presented as an animal that was supposed to be slain. He was presented as an animal that was supposed to be slain. Yes. yes. And John the Baptist did the, the, the introduction. Mm -hmm. There is the lamb that taketh away the sin yes. of the world. Amen. Which means from that point onward, yes. all the eyes of the nation of Israel, they were supposed to be glued on the Lord. Yes. To see the fulfillment. When you are trekking, you want to see the observation of everything that was written in the law. Mm. Is it being fulfilled by this man? Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. So that we may know, is this the animal really mm. of the meat that we should partake of? Yes. You see, if we do not have the knowledge of how this animal died, mm. we are not allowed to partake of that particular animal. Yes. In fact, you are going to defile yourself if you are going to eat as a priest or as a child of God. Yeah. If you are going to eat meat from an animal that did not have an explanation of how it died. How do we know, how do we have an explanation of how this animal dies? If we do not track, if we lose sight mm. of what is happening on this particular animal. Mm. Mm. You see? So there were two things which I really thank the Lord that those questions, they were answered to me mm. when I first came to this ministry. Amen. I was confused about this issue of the blood. Because Amen. there appears to be two kinds of blood. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the one that was shed <laughs> on the cross, is it the blood huh, that the Lord was talking about in John chapter 6? Mm. Is this the blood that the Lord was talking about in John chapter 6, verse 53, in the earlier scriptures. Is this mm. the blood? Mm. And then there's another a blood, kind of blood that we are going to read from Hebrews chapter 9. So these two used to confuse me. Takapon is kwane ropa rake. Ripi. Andidika. Ripi. Rakade uga pa mchinji kwa. Rakati pone sasei. Nukuti ropa mapere aro. Like I was saying, mm. we need to track this yes. animal yes. from the Old Testament. Mm. Mm. Where are we going? How are we going to track for us to answer all these questions? Mm. We have to go to the law and see how Israel used it to do. On the day of atonement, because remember the issue of blood from the scriptures that we've read, when the Lord gave blood to Israel, yes. he said, I've given you on the altar mm. because this blood is for the atonement of your souls. Mm -hmm. You want to be forgiven mm -hmm. of your sins. You want your sins to be cleansed mm -hmm. from you. Mm -hmm. You need blood. Mm -hmm. And in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, Apostle Paul was preaching, and he says, eh, almost everything in the law, it was purged by blood. Yes. And without shedding of blood, mm -hmm. there is no remission. No remission. And when we have an animal that died of itself, 
We do not have the shedding of blood there. Mm-hmm. We have death, no. yes. but we do not have the shedding of blood. Right. That's the right. blood is in, in, in itself. It died with its own blood. Mm-hmm. We are not allowed to eat that kind of meat. But we need to partake of a meal that is coming from the meat from which blood was actually shed. Yes. So without the shedding of blood, mm. there is no remission of sins. Mm. But like I said, we need a tracking system for us to know what is really happening. We need a tracking system. And if we go to Leviticus chapter 16, let's go on the day of atonement so that we can actually see that the blood that was shed on the cross, it had a mission that it needed to address. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There was an issue of the case that was on the ground yes. that needed to be addressed. Yes. And the Lord continued to emphasize when you kill an animal, make sure that you pour that blood on the ground mm-hmm. and cover it with the dust. Huh? Mm-hmm. But you forbidden, you forbidden us to eat the blood. Why are we pouring the blood on the ground? He said, it's not the first time this issue of the blood to be poured on the ground is not the first time. Mm. It is addressing a case. Remember from Genesis chapter 3 verse 17, a case was passed onto the ground. The ground was cursed. The ground was cursed. It was cursed. Yes. There was a case on the ground which needed to be addressed. And the Lord actually put a tracking system. This animal that you are going to eat, it must have its blood first poured to the ground on earth. Mukai ino farongi ine ro paradi wa pasi, but past but ground up. Kutumu kupanza kujiganyama yaju. Yes. So there was a need for him to shed blood the physical blood mm. that was going to, to, to actually uh, uh, drop and fall onto the earth. Yes. Remember, it had, or, it had also happened, Pastor, uh, from the book of Genesis chapter 4, yes. verse 9 and 10. Yes. Remember the Cain and Abel yes. uh, issue mm-hmm. that when, when Cain killed his brother Abel yes. huh, and blood, the blood of Abel actually uh, was received by the ground. Mm. But the ground checked the credentials of the blood. And yet, the, the scripture is very clear that the Lord heard the cry of the blood of Abel from the yes. ground. Yes. You can read Genesis chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And the Lord said unto Cain, Yes, what did he say? Where is Abel thy brother? Yes. And he said, Yes. I know not. Yes. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes. And he said, what hast thou done? Yes. The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. You see, from where? From the ground. From the ground. Mm. The blood of Abbe was crying from the ground. Mm. Which means this mission of actually the blood that is needed to reverse the curse that is on the ground. It had already started. When the ground was cursed, every blood that it was receiving it was actually sending a message that I need blood for this case that was pronounced on me to be reversed. Hmm. And it started way before in the book of Genesis chapter 4 when, when Cain killed Abel, his brother. Yes. The earth rejected the blood. I'm cursed, but this blood that I've received, it does not, it falls short hmm. of the credentials that is needed. Hmm. And throughout the life of Israel, Yes. They were instructed, kill the animal and pour the blood on the ground. And when our Lord died, true to the scriptures, blood actually oozed out of his body. Mm. From, from John chapter 19, from verse 34, uh, uh, John was testifying actually uh, of, 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 of what had happened. Let's, let's look at that scripture. What happened when, the, when our Lord was on the cross? Yes. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Yes. Verse 35. 
and, he and that, he that saw it bear record. A bear record, yes. And his record is true. Yes. And he knoweth that he say that he saith true. Yes. That you might believe. That you might believe. For so, this yes. For these things were done. Yes. That the scripture should be fulfilled. Yes. A bone of him shall be broken. Shall not, shall be, not be broken. Yes. Mm. And again another scripture yes. saith. They took him. They shall look. They shall look on him. Yes. Whom they pierced. You him. see, so they actually pierced him on the side. Yes. And blood and water mm -hmm. came out. Yes. yes. What was that blood going to address? The question of the case that mm -hmm. was supposed to be reversed right. on the ground. Right. So that blood that was shed on the cross, you have to understand. Mm. The physical blood that came yes. out of his body, yes. it had a mission yeah. that it needed to address. Mm. 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 But when we go now to the book of Hebrews chapter 9, from verse 11, we now find out which, which blood actually was given to us for the remission of our sins. Mm. So before we read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11, mm. let's, let's, let's hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 6. From verse number 53. John chapter 6 verse number 53. Let's hear what he said. Yes. Then Jesus said unto them. Verily, verily I say unto you. Except you eat the flesh of the son of man. And drink his blood. You have no life in you. You have no life in you. Whoso yes. eateth my flesh. Yes. And drinketh my blood. Yes. He hath eaten our life, yes. and I will raise him up at the last day. So this is the question, Mvangeri. Toro wana kupi? Andre. Toro wana kupi nyama yake kutitijiki. Toro wana kupi ropa raki kutitinwe. Nukute zwanzi kana aninga asina kujika nyama yangu. Neku nwa ropa rangu. Ana upenyu usinga peri mahari. You see? So it, 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 this is scripture. It, it actually shows that definitely this is not the the blood that he shed on that day mm -hmm. when he was hanging on the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. uh -uh. no. Which yes. means this blood is not going to be eaten or mm -hmm. to be to be drunk physically. Yes. This is a spiritual exercise. Um, yes. huh? mm -hmm. And when the Lord is saying whosoever, you must also remember that the atonement that the Lord wanted to address, mm -hmm. it was not the atonement of the body. Mm -hmm. So there are two issues. Yes. There is the atonement of the soul mm -hmm. that the Lord had given blood for the atonement of the soul. Mm -hmm. The spirit man. Yes. Huh? The mm -hmm. salvation of our souls. Mm -hmm. You see, that need to, needed to be addressed. But no, we cannot talk about the, 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 only the salvation of our souls. We should also remember that these souls, they are also in this earth. Amen. The body. Mm. You see, there was a case also on the earth. Mm. And when the ground was cursed, you must also understand that when, when the Lord God formed man, he formed man out of the dust of the earth. Mm. Yes. You see, mm. he formed man out of the dust, dust. of the earth. Yeah. And remember that prophet in Leviticus chapter 17, when you hunt an animal, and when you have poured the... the, the the, 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 the blood on the ground. Mm. Cover it with the dust. Yes. You see? Yeah. Mm. Cover it with the dust. Mm. There is something about the dust that I need blood to address. There's mm. a case mm. on the ground. Mm. So when the, when the ground is cased, all the byproducts <laughs> of the ground, they also carry the case. Mm. You see? So these are the two things that were supposed to be addressed. These were the two things that were supposed to be addressed. Yes. So when I read the John chapter 6, I wanted you to see mm. that the blood which is there given for the remission of our sins mm. is not that blood that was shed on the cross. But you must understand the connection mm -hmm. because the blood that we are going to be, to be talking about, which is there for the atonement of our souls, was not going to be available without the blood that was shed on the cross. Mm. So when we are preaching about the blood of the cross, you must understand about these two things. You must understand about these two things. Yes. 
So let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. And I want you to understand why we are reading all this. We are coming back to the, to the gladness. <laughs> the gladness mm -hmm. that is actually in the Garden of Eden. We are coming back there. And I want you to take note and to remember all those two scriptures that I gave you. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 to 3. And Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 to 35. But for now, let's read Hebrews chapter 9 and see which blood is there. But we have to, 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 Mfangera, I want you also to go to Leviticus chapter 16 from verse 15. Because we cannot eat an animal that we have not tracked. Yeah. How are we going to track this animal? We go to the Old Testament scriptures and see is this the animal which flesh we should eat and whose blood we should we are now allowed to partake of in the New Testament. Yes. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. Yes. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Yes. Not made with hands. Yes. That is to say, not of this building. So he was now addressing the Exodus chapter 31 from verse number 1 where that first tabernacle, it was made by Bazaleo and Aholiab. Yes the man whom God has actually put his spirit. So that tabernacle which Israel was proud about, according to the apostle, he is describing that tabernacle mm. as that which was made with the hands. Yes. But when Christ now, who is the high priest of better things, yes. of good things mm -hmm. to come, he actually entered a more perfect yes. tabernacle. Not yes. to say not to say, uh, not, of this not of this building. Yes, first of all. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, yes. but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, yes. having obtained eternal redemption for us. So it gives us another, another, another question. Mm. Where did he enter with this blood? <laughs> he entered this blood into the holy, holy place. place. Remember, it's not made of 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 men's hands mm. it's not of this building mm. it's not of this building mm. and remember what he did on that day when he died he did something which demonstrated that if it was that blood that was shed on the cross that was needed to be harvested according to Leviticus chapter 16 we are going to go very soon mm. we were going to see we were supposed to see Christ entering into the temple that was in Jerusalem yes. with that blood. Mm. But what he did, he actually uh, 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 to tear apart the veil that was in that temple. Mm. And when you tear that veil apart, there is no more holy place to talk about. Mm. What differentiated these places, the holy place and the most holy place, it was the veil. Mm. And when that veil is torn from top to bottom, yes. what it means is there is no more holy place. Amen. Huh? Amen. There is no more yes. most holy place. Yes. It's the whole of holies. It's a see-through now. It's a see-through. It's, mm. it's no longer, there, there's nothing holy mm. about it. Mm. So he actually demonstrated that this is not the, the place where I am going to end up with my blood mm. as the high priest. No. <laughs> so he went into another place, into heaven. Let's, let's read further and see where he ended. Yes. Verse 13. Verse, sorry, verse 13. Yes. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, yes. sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, yes. how much more shall the blood of Christ? The blood of what? Of Christ. The blood of Christ. Who so, 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 wait there, Pastor. Yes. There's a difference which I also I, I, I want to acknowledge. If you do not understand this difference, you will never understand which blood exactly was offered for the atonement of your soul. <laughs> Who's the blood? And mark the choice of words yes. which the apostle used. Yes. So when he ended, he did not end with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He ended with the blood of, of Christ. Christ. You see? Yes. And after the comma there, he is explaining which blood, which is the blood of Christ are you talking about? 
He did not end with the blood of Jesus, but he ended with the blood of Christ. Yes. Who, Finish that scripture. Yes. Who through the eternal spirit yes. offered himself without spot to God. So he explains, when I'm talking about the blood of Christ, I'm simply saying, when Christ entered into heaven, he was not holding any power of blood. Mm. <laughs> he offered himself, himself without spot to God. Yes. So when he presented himself without support to God, mm. that is the blood Amen. of Christ. Amen. Amen. Which purges your conscience from dead works yes. to save the living God. Hallelujah. So he was not holding anything. So when you talk about the blood of Christ, we are talking about Christ himself without spot mm. being presented unto God. Yes. That's why when we preach the message, of Christ, it must be without spot. Yes. And the message of Christ without spot is the blood of Christ. Mm. And that is the blood which he instructed in, in, in from, from John chapter 6, verse 53. This is the blood that you must, you must drink. And this is the flesh that you must eat. Mm. This message that I am preaching unto you concerning the trekking of this animal. When we are talking about the life that he lived in the flesh, the fulfillment of the law. Huh? Yes. When you talk about how he fulfilled every precept of the law, yes. we are talking about the flesh. Yes. Huh? Because you will not get the blood if there is no flesh. Mm. But when we are talking about this flesh now, we are not talking about that physical body that he was in. Mm -hmm. That's why many yes. disciples were offended yes. in yes. John chapter 6. Mm -hmm. They said, how can this man offer his mm -hmm. flesh for us to eat? Mm -hmm. He was not referring to the flesh of his physical body that he was in the flesh. He was referring <laughs> to, 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 to that gospel Hallelujah. about the fulfillment of the law. Hallelujah. That gospel about our Lord in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That's why in First John chapter 4 from verse 1, he actually says, there are going to be spirits that are going to come. You must not just believe every spirit. Yes. Because not every spirit is of God. Mm. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Verse number 2, First John chapter 4, verse number 2. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. How do we know the spirit of God? Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. You see now, this is the tracking system. Mm. When we talk about Jesus in the flesh, yes. we are going back to the trekking system. Mm. We look at the life that our Lord lived in the flesh. Mm. What was his mission? How was he coming to fulfill what was written in the law? Mm. It constitutes the appreciation of the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. That is the flesh Amen. and the blood yes. that we are supposed to partake of. Yes. Knowing very well that we cannot have Christ, whom we know that Christ is a phenomenon, is a, a, a person mm. that we get after the cross. Mm. He is actually presented unto us as the begotten son. Amen. But we, can, we could not have the begotten son if we didn't have the son of man. So it is the son of yes. man who suffers on yes. the cross. And mm. then we have the begotten son. Yes. So these yes. two, they go hand in hand. Yes. You see. Yes. We preach mm. because the spirit of God is, is inside, inside of us. Mm. That's why we acknowledge that Jesus came in the flesh. Mm. When you go into the scriptures, we go and trace. Huh? Just like I, 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 I instructed John Van Gerry to open Leviticus chapter 16, mm. verse 15. Mm. And let us see. What were, what were the instructions of the sin offering? You remember there were two gods that Israel was supposed to bring on the day of atonement. Yes. The scapegoat and the other one, the, 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 the sin offering, the god of sin offering. Let's see. Because our Lord, when he died on the cross, he died as a sin offering. Yeah. And let's see what happened. And how do we know that this indeed is the animal that we are allowed? This is the meat that we are allowed to, to eat. Let's go to the trekking system. Mm. This is the, the animal that Israel hunted. 
from the Old Testament scriptures, verse 15 of Leviticus chapter 16. Then shall ye kill the goat of the sin offering? Yes. That is for the people. Yes. Mm. And bring his blood within the veil. Yes. And do with that blood as he did yes. with the blood of the bullock. Yes. And sprinkle it upon the mess seat. Yes. And before the mess seat. Yes. You and see. He shall, yes, he shall do what? He shall make an atonement for the holy place. Yes. Because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Yes. And because of their transgression. Yes. In all their sins. Yes. And so shall ye do for the tabernacle of the congregation. Yes. That remaineth among them in yes. the midst of their uncleanness. Okay, okay. You can read further. You can read all, the whole chapter. If you want to understand what exactly Israel was doing on the day of atonement. Mm -hmm. You see. So, why were we in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 9? We wanted to see, is this the animal? Yes. Huh? Is this really what Israel hunted for? Mm -hmm. Did Israel catch this animal? Mm -hmm. So, you know what happened on that day on Gethsemane? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they went to, to, to the Lord with Judas Iscariot, they were actually fulfilling uh, what uh, Leviticus chapter 17 had mm -hmm. said. When you hunt for this animal, there should be a time when this animal is caught. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, so this is what was happening. So in Leviticus chapter 16 is very clear. The blood of that animal yes. is the one that is actually presented mm -hmm. huh? yes. within, within the veil. Mm -hmm. It's the one that is presented within the veil, the blood. Mm -hmm. Not the animal itself, but the blood. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's why I was saying, the death was death was the means. It was actually the means yes. which was going to necessitate. Because remember, there was the issue of the veil. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. And in that scripture in Hebrews chapter 9, it was talking about his body as the veil. Yes. Because when yes. you are entering into the most holy place, mm -hmm. you have to pass through the veil. Yes. Mm. You see? Yes. You don't enter with the veil. Mm. Uh-uh. You pass through the veil. The only time where our Lord was going to pass through the veil, if the veil was his body, then we we're supposed to see the, the, the high priest entering into yes. the veil, within yes. the veil, yes. with his blood now. Yes. You see? So this is the message Amen. that I wanted to extract. So all this message that I was sharing with you I wanted to prepare you for Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 to 35. Because Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 to 35, is the one that is going to lead us to the garden of the Lord, to Eden. But I like this scripture. Look at that scripture. Ezekiel 36, verse 33. And there's always something that is amazing about this Bible pattern. Look at that scripture. What scripture it is? It is verse 33. Yes. Eh? Yes. Of Ezekiel chapter 36. 36. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, 36 is the number that you obtain when you multiply 6 by 6. Hmm. And 6 is the number of insufficiency. Yes. So at 36, we are at a point where the insufficiency, the multiplication of insufficiency, hmm. the Lord was prophesying on that scripture about a day. Hmm. Huh? And that day is marked by what the, our Lord did on the cross. Right. The day when our Lord died on the cross, remember, he was 33 years when he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. What was he doing on the cross? He was marking the provision of a means by which People were going to be atoned. Amen. People were going to be forgiven of their sins. Yes. And it is on Ezekiel chapter 36, 
verse 33. Mm. And let's read that scripture. Thus said the Lord God. What does the Lord say? In the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities. There is a day that I will cleanse you from all your iniquities. I, yes. I will also cause you to dwell in the cities. I will cause you, after cleansing you from your iniquities, I am going to cause you to dwell in the cities. And the west shall be built. The west shall be built. In other words, there is a city that is going to be available, that is going to be prepared for you. Huh? But there is a day. In the day. Huh? Not, mm. not on that day. No. But in the day. Yes. It is it is actually a pointer of a dispensation. Right. It's not something that was going to happen on a single day. But the death of our Lord on the cross was going to mark the beginning of a dispensation. Mm. And in that dispensation, the Lord was going to embark on a process of sanctification where he was going to clean his people from all their iniquities. And he was going to transfer them so that they are going to dwell not in ruins, mm. not in wastes. Yes but in well-built cities. Amen. Yes, verse 34. And the desolate land shall be tilled. Yes. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. So there's going to be tillage <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the desolate land. Mm. There's going to be tillage. Huh? Number one, this place shall be inhabited. In other words, I'm going to build a city where I'm going to transfer you but before you enter and dwell in that city, I will cause you to dwell in that city. But before you do that, I must cleanse you mm. from all your sins. Yes. In other words, if it is the blood that he is going to use to cleanse his people, mm. if that is the blood, which means he was launching a dispensation where he was going to introduce the blood of Christ which was going to be given for the sanctification of his people. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission, according to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. So, there is going to be tillage. Mark, take note of all these things that the Lord is doing. The Lord is building a city, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, the Lord, there is going to be tillage in a place which was desolate. The people used to know this place as an uncultivated, untilled. Yes. But there is coming a dispensation where I'm going to till, till. that land. Yes. Yes. And what else are you going to do? And they shall say, This yes. land was desolate, it's become like the Garden of Eden. This land which used to be desolate is now become like the Garden of Eden. That's Hallelujah. where we're going. So he's equating. Huh? Yes. This new place that is going to put his people is equating it to the Garden of Eden. And there's a question, why the Garden of Eden? Why is Ezekiel prophesying about the New Testament, which is coming where the Lord is going to clean his people and where the Lord is going to till the land? And then he's saying, if you want to understand what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this desolate it is going to be like the Garden of Eden. Mm. Yes. And the west and desolate and ruined cities are become fenced. Yes. And are inhabited. You see, when we go to the Garden of Eden, we are coming to a place which is number one, inhabited, number two, which is fenced. Amen. So when he's comparing the Garden of Eden with the New Testament mm. dispensation or the New Testament church, he's actually saying, the New Testament church can be likened to the Garden of God, to the Garden of Eden. Of Eden. Mm. The mm. Garden of Eden is not, is not a west. The Garden of Eden mm. is not dissolute, desolate. The, the Garden of Eden is not ruined. The Garden of Eden is defensed. Amen. And it is inhabited. Yes. And yes. this is what I'm going to do in the day mm. 
Not in that day or on that day, no, but in, the, in day. the day, mm. which means it's a process. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's going to happen throughout the New Testament dispensation. Yes. God always likened the salvation, the beauty of the New Testament to the Garden of Eden. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 to 3. Yes. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Those who follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord. So there are people who are following after many things. When you see people going to church, make no mistake, don't always assume that they are seeking or following after righteousness. <laughs> I can assure you, myself, I was also one of those people. <laughs> you can be a very serious person going to church day in, day out, but not following after, after righteousness. righteousness. You'll be following after uh, uh, some of the things that we used to follow in shrines. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Others they they the problems. They were they, they were ch childless. Mm. Huh? They were barren. Yes. You can go to church because of your physical or biological barren state. Mm. You can be a very zealous someone. People will say this man is following after righteousness. Mm. But you will not be following after righteousness. You are following after a child. Yes. yes. So many shrines are full. Don't think that those people, they are following after righteousness. righteousness. But this prophecy of Isaiah, it is written to those who follow after righteousness. So, if you are following after other things, mm. this prophecy will not help you. No. That's why I said Israel was supposed to follow diligently like one who is hunting mm. for that particular animal until they catch the animal, kill the animal, let the blood fall onto the earth and cover that blood with the, with the dust. Mm -hmm. And then later on, partake of the, the meat of that particular animal. What are you following after? Huh? Mm -hmm. When the Ziklag Sound Advice 12 came, there were so many people that we thought they were following after righteousness. When holiness, purity was introduced, they said, there are so many churches in this world. All right. You see. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow after righteousness and seek the Lord, you see, yes. if you are going to find people who follow after righteousness yes. and seek the Lord, mm. what should these people do? Mm. Look at what they do. These people, what they should do. Those who follow after righteousness and those who seek the Lord, mm. what are you instruct them to do, Isaiah? Look unto the rock whence you are hewn. You see? And to the hole of the pit yes. whence you are digged. What is he talking about? Is he not talking about the rock where we are hewn? Is not talking about our, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Is not our Lord Jesus Christ the rock? Huh? Amen. Is he not the rock? He is. Huh? He is yes. the rock. He is the rock. Yes. But that rock now, that is where when we are hewn. Yes. In other words, this rock, we have to be extracted from this rock. Amen. And this rock had to go through pain. Yes. He's talking about the suffering of, of Christ. Christ. Mm. Yes. Huh? Yes. He's talking about the suffering of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. He's saying those who follow after righteousness and those who seek the Lord, look unto the rock when they are hidden, and to the wall of the pit when you are digged. Yes. You are always focused on your salvation. Mm. You are always focused on how did I become a child of God? Huh? Mm. You go to Israel and ask them. 
Tell me about salvation. What happened to the son of man? Why, what was he doing? Are there records of the life that the son of man lived here on earth? What did Jeremiah say concerning him? What did Malachi say concerning him? What did Jonah say concerning him? What did Abraham say concerning him? Huh? Look unto the rock. You are following after righteousness. You seek the Lord. Yeah. This is what you should look. Yes. Let's continue with that scripture. Look unto Abraham your father. Look unto Abraham your father. And unto Sarah that bear you. Yes. For I called him alone. Yes. And blessed him. And increased him. Yes. And what happened? For the Lord shall comfort Zion. The Lord shall comfort Zion. He yes. Will, he will comfort all her waste places. All her waste places. And he will make her, her wilderness like Eden. He is going to make her wilderness like Eden. And her desert like the garden of the Lord. Her desert shall be made like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. You see, this is what and Eden should teach you. Hallelujah. So, yes. what we have learned from these two scriptures, Ezekiel chapter 36, chapter 36, verse 33 to 35, and Isaiah chapter 51, verse 1 to 3, we have learned... Uh, four things that the Garden of Eden should point to us. I, I am not, I'm not quite sure whether we are going to be able to exhaust all these four things. Mm -hmm. So, the Garden of Eden, it is a place which is fenced. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. It is a place which is fenced. Mm -hmm. There is the protection of the Lord yes. in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. But you are going to be surprised when you go to the Garden of Israel of, of Eden, Eden. You will not hear of any fence. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> you see, the, 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 the Garden of Eden is inhabited. Yes. It is not a ruin. Yes. It is not a waste. Yes. The Garden of Eden it is a place of joy and gladness. Yes. Yes. Huh? yes. The Garden of Eden is a place of thanksgiving, mm. and there's always a voice of melody mm. in the garden in the Garden of Eden. So it's quite interesting. Yes. Quite interesting. You know Shamisa. Shamisa. <laughs> Sino shamisa zvichikuta horo neshokora mwari. Ari kuprofita pamusoro penguwa dzatiri dzino the New Testament. Kana masvika mu New Testament masvika mziona. Ziona harisi dongo. Ziona harisi gwenga. Ziona rakafanana ne the garden of the Lord. Yes. Kuno wani kwachiku ziona kana taenda there is joy and gladness. Amen. In Zion. You see. Mm. So, what is it about the Garden of Eden which the Lord wants us to learn? Mm. What is it? And if we go to the... <laughs> it's interesting now. Yeah, Let's go and see how this garden uh, came into being. Huh? This garden was not something that was always there. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is one thing that you, you must understand. These are parameters that I'm showing you which are going to help you to understand how this garden helps us to understand the New Testament. Yes. And you're also going to appreciate what causes joy and gladness in this garden. Is there any scripture that you have read that, the, that uh, Adam and his wife huh, they, were, they, they, they were full of joy and they were glad while it's still in the garden. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but as I is saying, if you go to, to the garden of the Lord, that garden is full of joy mm. and gladness. Mm. 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 So what happened? 
Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Yes. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So the Lord God planted the garden mm. eastward in Eden. Yes. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Yes. So when you look at the garden of the Lord, mm. the garden of Eden, yes. it is a place which shows us the handwork of the Lord God. Amen. Huh? Amen. Just like he said in Ezekiel, he said, what I'm going to do now is, after I have cleansed you from your iniquities, I am going to cause you. Huh? Mm -hmm. I am going to cause you. So when we see men, huh, the man and his wife in the garden of, of, of Eden, we know very well that the Lord God planted a garden, mm. which means everything that is there in the garden, it is the work of the Lord. It's going to help us, it's going to help us this, these parameters to appreciate what brought joy and gladness in, in the garden. Mm. What joy, what, what gladness is in the garden. So, for the first time, we hear of the Lord. Huh? Mm. Yes. Planting yes. A, garden a garden eastward of Eden. Mm. So that's what we hear when we see, when we are going to look at the New Testament, we will see the Lord God Himself. Doing all this work. Remember the the, 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 the the garden was planted when the man was already formed. Yes. Huh? Yes. And then he took the man that he had formed and pl placed him into the, yes, garden, the garden. Which he planted mm. on verse number and verse number. And what did he say on verse number nine? And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow. Every tree that yes. is pleasant to the sight. Yes. And good for food. Yes. The tree of life. Yes. Also in the midst of the garden. Yes. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yes. And a river went out of Eden. Yes. To water the garden. Yes. And from thence yes. it was parted and became into four heads. Yes. The name of the first is Pison. Yes. That is it. Yes. Which Compasses the whole land of our villa yes. where there is gold. Yes. And the gold of that land is good. Yes. And there is delium and onyx stone. Mm -hmm. And the name of the second river mm -hmm. is Gion. Mm -hmm. The name is it uh, that compasses the whole land, uh, the whole land of Ethiopia. Yes. And the name of the third river is Edekel. Yes. That is it which goeth. Uh, toward the east of Assyria. Yes. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Okay, just end there. I'm going to get for now. So, <laughs> so this is the land <clears throat> where God has planted a garden. Mm. And he actually equates this garden uh, of Eden, the garden of the Lord, to the New Testament church. See, this is, if you want to understand the New Testament church, mm -hmm. go to the garden. And mm garden, -hmm. mm -hmm. First and foremost, if you are going to find yourself in the New Testament church, know very well that there is nothing, nothing that you did by yourself to be in that garden. This yes. garden is actually the work of the Lord. Yes. Huh? Yes. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 
So knowing very well that these two trees, the other one, just like its name, it is the tree that gives life, mm. the tree of life. Mm. But this other one, which is Sato now, it appears to be something nice, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mm. Yet this is the tree of death. Mm. The, both these trees are there in the garden at the same time. Amen. So, what is the fence now? Uh-huh. The word fence there is actually talking of the security. The fence also plays another significant role of marking the boundary. If, if, if you have got a stand and then you put your fence there, mm-hmm. it serves two purposes. It marks the boundary of your stand. Right. And also, it, it protects you from intruders. It plays a security role. Mm -hmm. So the Garden of Eden is also uh, spoken of as a place where God has fenced. Mm. And he's saying the New Testament is also like that. Amen. But when you read about the Garden of Eden, you don't find any fence there. (laughs) But the fence is there. The fence is on verse number um, 16. And 17, and take note of verses 16. It's also a Bible pattern. When you when when you read scriptures and then you go to verse 16, <laughs> there is something there about verse 16. Think of John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, <laughs> and he gave his only begotten son. There's something about verse 16 that is that that is very, very important <laughs> to take note of. So the fence, the security <laughs> that is there, it is the, 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 the commandment of the Lord. Amen. The reason why God uh, uh, instructed us to go to the garden, he wanted us to know the life of the garden. Okay. How secure were the men. Take note, there is the, the, there's the tree there that causes death which is described as the tree of knowledge and good and of good and evil. Yes. And then there's a tree that gives life, mm. which is described as the tree of life. They are there in the garden, mm. these two trees. Yes. How is man then going to live? Where is the security of man? <laughs> Where is the security of man? Where is the fence that God has actually erected? In obedience. <laughs> Verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Yes. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Mm. Yes. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yes. thou shalt not eat of it. Yes. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, yes. thou shalt surely die. Mm. You see, this is the security. God does not need to put a, a security. Uh, uh, installations in his garden. Mm. He commanded the words of the Lord, they are the security yes. to the men. The words of the yes. Lord, the commandment of the Lord mm. is the life of the man and his wife. Mm. This is the security. This is where you are going to get life. So the Lord said, when I shall cleanse you from all your iniquities, I am going to put you in a place that I have built. I am going to build the west, the desolate, and my place shall be like the Garden of Eden. Yes. Fenced and inhabited. Yes. Huh? Where is the fence in, 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 in the Garden of Eden? Have you ever read a scripture which says God had put a fence? <laughs> and take note of when they disobeyed in Genesis chapter 3. That's when we discover a, a, something that is very, very interesting. That's when we discover something that is very interesting. And just like what the Lord had said, when he planted this garden, he made them to know you may eat 
of every tree that is in the garden. But this other tree of knowledge of good and evil, mm. you must not eat. Because in the day that you shall eat, you shall you surely shall die. die. Mm. So the entrance of the serpent on Genesis chapter 3 mm. was not really the problem. Mm. God knew very well that the template that I have set in Eden, in this garden of Eden, yes. is that the security of the man is not that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is not there in the garden. No. Their security is when they abide, when they obey mm. to, to my instruction. So their survival in the garden of Eden, mm. it, it depended on his word. Mm. That's why the Lord always say, if you obey my words, then you shall live. Huh? But if you disobey my words, then you shall die. Mm. Like what Mvangeri said, the issue was in obedience. Amen. That was where the security was. Do panga paine, paine, kurara makwao, upenyu wao, wanga urumu kuterera, zinuta uru wanamwari. So this is what he said. So, in that scripture in Isaiah 51, there's something that is very interesting that I want to show you. Um, and go and we are enjoying, Pastor. Yes. Uh, yes, on the issue of fence there, uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My son, forget not my law. And you said the fence of God, it is his instruction. It is the commandment. Uh, so he says, my son, forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandments. Yes, yes. Verse number two, for length of days mm. and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Mm. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thine heart. So I, I see this verse, uh, uh, yes, uh, clarifying the matter where you say it, it's about the law of God. That's the fence. Okay. Yes. And when Adam was put in the garden, yes. the fence was there. Yes. But the fence did not bar Satan yes. from entering into the garden. Yes. But as long as there is no adherence to whatever the devil wants, and mm -hmm. demands, mm -hmm. the fence is intact mm -hmm. in the presence of every negative thing. And today we face such a world yes. where people say, ah, there's too much around. Mm -hmm. There is uh, so much force. There are so many forces fighting me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because of those forces, yes. I had to cut corners probably in mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. I had to do this and I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, mm -hmm. you have taken off from the neck the instruction of the Lord. And by taking off from the neck the instruction of the Lord, yes. you no longer have the defense. Yes. Because the devil operates and understands the law that once you have taken away the commandments, the instruction of God, you are now defenseless. Mm -hmm. So, kanatoda kurwa, atindo maanyi kundo ataka, tisinga ziwi, tinozoka, kunepa tatiza, kuya kuti, no, I disobeyed this instruction for my safety to be on. Yes, yes, Mvangeli. So, it's very, 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 very significant to take note of our security. Yes. So, when the Lord said, I have made the New Testament, just like the Garden of Eden. Yes. We go back to the Garden of Eden mm. and we see that in the New Testament, mm. we live side by side with the devil. Mm. When mm. God launched, when our Lord launched the New Testament, mm -hmm. he did not cut the tree of the knowledge of good and evil no. from the Garden. No. They are there, yeah. these two trees. Yes. They are there in the Garden. 
The tree of life is there. Mm. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is there. It remains there. It remains there. Mm. What is your security? No? Mm. Is the obed- obedience mm. to God's law. The law of the Lord is our is our security. our security. Mm. So in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 he says the, the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Amen. The righteous run into it mm. and are safe and is safe. So the safety there is not in your prayers. No. The safety is to run into this tower. Amen. Huh? Mm-hmm. And when you run into this tower, you are going into the New Testament church. Yes. When you go into the New Testament church, the first thing that you encounter, it is the Lord's instructions. Mm-hmm. The Lord's instructions they are our refuge. They are our security. Amen. Mm-hmm. We are safe as long as we are in the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. You must take note of what happened to the sons of Skiva. Yeah, the yeah. sons of Skiva. Yes. They were not in the name. No. Mm-hmm. They heard about uh, the casting out of demons. Yes. They've seen Paul and other ministers yes. casting out demons. Yes. They didn't know that to be in the name, it is not the words of the mouth. <laughs> it is actually obedience yes. to the instructions of the Lord. Yes. The more you obey the instructions of the Lord, mm. the safer you are from the devil and his demons. Amen. So God did not cut the tree of knowledge and good of good and evil. He left it in the garden. So he said, if you want to understand how people survive in the New Testament, yes. go back to the garden and see what I did there. Having said these two trees, they are there in the garden. Verse 16 is key. The Lord commanded. When the Lord opens his mouth to utter a commandment, mm. those commandments now, they bring security. Amen. Amen. So, when the Lord opens his mouth to utter a commandment, those commandments now, they bring security. Amen. Amen. So, when Ika zingwa iwo usina kugara mutawo usiri mushokora mwari ino dzoka resimba ikakukurira the reason why we spend more time preaching the word of god telling you the commandment of god we know you are secure you are protected when you obey the commandment of the lord hmm. most people they don't want to obey instructions of the Lord. Mm. But one thing which is very um, uh, shocking, Pastor, to my new Vangeli Mafrod, yes. is most people, when you hear and look at what they do, those who approach those uh, shrine people, yes. they are given instructions that are pathetic, some of them. Huh? Mm-hmm. Instructions that are indecent. Yes, huh? yes, yes. One yes. The other day I was telling you that we were given instruction. You know, uh, I was too young. Mm-hmm. I went with my mother to this other Sangoma. Then I was struggling with breathing. I think I was just early secondary school. Okay. The Sangoma said, Go and hunt for a chameleon. If you Take that chameleon alive. Right. Take a, a, a bottle. Put that chameleon in that bottle. Mm. Seal that bottle. Right. Let that chameleon die. Mm. After some days, give this child of yours that bottle and let him breathe in and out oh. on the mouth of that bottle from this rotten chameleon oh. that is in that bottle. Huh? Oh. And we hunted for a chameleon. You know, if you hunt for a chameleon, you will not find one. No. <laughs> we hunted for a chameleon until we retired. <laughs> but we are willing. We are willing. Yeah. When we come to the kingdom of God, to the New Testament, mm. we are given instruction. Yes. We find it very difficult. Oh, yeah. The Sangoma, where did they get this uh, uh, enchantment and all these uh, parameters that you need an in instruction? The devil borrows from the Lord. Yes. That's why you see that even when you want to go 
to, to, to get magic. Mm. You will not get magic without following the instructions of the mm. devil. Mm. The devil will always give you instructions to follow. Yes. Huh? Yes. He's borrowing that. He knows very well the devil that the power for you to be really in my kingdom, mm. it is when you obey me. Amen. When you obey the instructions that I give you, it is enough confirmation that you are a part of this kingdom. In the same manner, if you obey the instructions of the garden, you inhabit the garden. Yes. But when you, when you disobey the, the instructions of the garden, yes. what do we see from the garden of Eden? We see expulsion of right. the garden. Yes. From the garden. From the garden. You see? Yes. Yes. Uno zingwa. No zingwa. You may not be expelled or excommunicated from the church. But when you are functioning and living outside God's instructions, mm -hmm. the devil, he <laughs> will actually overcome you. Because your security is when you are in the Lord. Amen. Hmm? Amen. When you are in the Lord, you are but in the name of Jesus. Mm. Which Jesus are you talking about? Huh? If you were really in Jesus, were you going to be here where you are sleeping right now? You are here because you have gone out of the garden. That's right. You see? Yes. You have gone out of the garden. So, a very important lesson. The security of us in the garden. Mm. It is when we obey Amen. God's instruction. Amen. That's why I gave you uh, John chapter chapter 3 verse 16. Mm. There are instructions on that scripture. Mm. Mm. There, there, there are instructions there. The instruction is when the begotten son is going to speak, mm. believe Amen. in him. Amen. You cannot just believe how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? Mm -hmm. How shall they hear if there is no preacher? preacher. In, in, in John chapter uh, 3 verse 16, yes. there are preachers there. Yes. Huh? Yes. There is the message of Christ there. Yes. The Lord is going to speak. Mm -hmm. So in, Ezekiel, in, 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 in Isaiah 51, uh, Isaiah 51 verse number 4, yes. after telling us about the garden, mm -hmm. What did he say? Hearken unto me, my people. So he's saying, listen to me, my people. And give ear unto me. Give ear unto me, my people. O my nation. Yes. For a law shall proceed from me. There is a law that shall proceed from me. And I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. You see now. Huh? After introducing the Garden of Eden. Yes. He says... If you want to know more about this garden, mm. huh, the security of this garden is based on the law that proceed from me. Then the Chitaura Mugadin Imam. Marwaitaura Mugadin. Though we do not have scriptures that says Marwaitaura Mugadin, if you just look at um, what happened when um, Adam and his wife fell. On verse 8, it actually says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden yes. in the cool of the day. No. There is a problem in <laughs> hearing something. You can if you are if if you cannot tell that this is Pastor Bale's voice if I haven't spoken to you. For you to tell that this is my voice, it means you should have heard me speaking. Yes. Then if I speak for the second time or the third time or the fourth time, mm. you identify yes. that the one who is speaking it's is Pastor Balot. Yes. You see? Mm. So when men fell mm. and they heard the voice of the Lord, mm. it means that this voice, it was not coming to them for the first time. Mm. They were used yes. to hearing his voice. That's right. They were used to hearing his word. And what was God coming to, to, 
to talk or converse with men. Mm. His law. His so law. when you come to Mount Zion, when you come to the mountain of the Lord, you are going to be confronted with the law of the Lord. Amen. Mutemu wa mwari, uchatawur wa New Testament. Mm. Yes. It's going to come in form of doctrine, it's going to come in form of admonitions, it's going to come in form of exhortations, yes. it's going to come in form of traditions, it's going to come in form of instructions. Mm. The Amen. security Amen. that is there in, in the garden. In the garden. You see. But I, I, I know I'm not going to conclude everything about the garden and the prophecies from Isaiah and Ezekiel. But let's go to the book of um, Psalm number 46 from verse number 1 and see what the Lord said concerning the garden which we are going to, to be very much um, uh, paying, uh, maybe making our conclusion. Psalm 46 from verse number 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will, will not we fear Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst. So who is sea, our refuge? Hmm? God is our refuge. God is our refuge. Yes. So you may quote this scripture when you are in trouble mm. and you say, God is my refuge. Mm. God is my strength. Yes. A very present help in trouble. Yes. But you have to understand in what way is God your refuge? Mm. In what way is God your strength? Mm. In what way is the Lord going to help you in time of trouble? How? Mm. Do you think by just quoting the scripture? In obeying the law of God. You see now, it comes back to obedience yes. to the law of God. Yeah. It, it taught us to, to, to cite scriptures mm. and declare the scriptures <laughs> to God. Say, God is my refuge. God mm. is my refuge. God is my strength. God is my strength. Mm. In what way is God your strength? When you obey what the Lord has said, yes. you are safe. Yes. You are safe. Mm. God is going to help you. Verse number two. Therefore, will not we fear? We are not going to fear anything. Though the earth be removed. Even if the earth is going to be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Even if the mountains are going to be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Even if the waters are going to roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Yes. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Yes. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Yes, see. Verse 5. God is in the midst of her. Yes. She shall not be moved. Yes. God shall help her. Yes. And that right early. You see now. So, man. What makes uh, this, this city glad? He's talking about the New Testament believers. Yes. Yeah. He's, no, he's talking about Mount Zion. Yes. He's talking about the garden. And you know, if, if, if you remember the scripture that evangelists have read, there was also a river in the garden. Yes. Do you still remember? Yes. Genesis chapter 2. Yes. Where evangelists, my followers, read. was written, yes. There were no rivers in the garden. There was a river in the garden mm. which parted into four. Yes. Huh? So if we go to the garden, and look at the garden, we derive lessons. What made Adam and his wife glad when they were in the garden? Mm. It was the river. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm. <laughs> it was the river. Mm. And David is prophesying. He is saying, there is a river. Huh? Yes. There is a river. And in this river, there are streams 
What makes the city glad mm. is not the river. No, read that scripture again, Pastor. It's not the river. The gladness that is in the garden, it is coming from a river. There is a river. The streams way of shall make glad the city of God. Which means if you go into the city of God yes. and find them glad, mm. remember that there is a river. Yes. But what exactly is bringing gladness into this city? They are the streams way of. Yes. The streams way of. Yes. The streams that are coming from the river. Mm. And verse 5 says, God is in the midst, midst of her. God is in the midst of her. Mm. Yes. Yes. And, and she, this, this city shall not be moved. Yes. God shall help mm. her. And that right early. Mm. That river is the one that is bringing gladness yes. into the city of God. Yes. If you see this city, if you hear shouts of joy yes. and, and jubilation and celebration, if you see people glad in this city, mm. there is a river. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and, and it violates geography, you see. <laughs> if you are in geography, the streams, they actually flow into a river. Yeah? Yes. The, the small streams, mm. they flow into the river. Into the river. But these streams that we read of mm. in the book of Psalm, they flow from the river. <laughs> Going into the city. <laughs> huh? This other stream is going this other direction. <laughs> this other stream is going this other direction. Where are they are going? They are supplying the city. water into mm. the city. Amen. Yes. So the water that is always flowing in the garden mm. from this river. Mm. You know this river that was in Genesis chapter 2? Yes. It also parted into four. Mm. And we spoke about it. And in Revelation chapter 22, this also, the same river is also spoken of in Revelation chapter 22. The same river. The same river also is there in Ezekiel chapter 47. Revelation chapter 22, verse number 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Yes. Clear as crystal. Yes. Proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. What was it doing? Yes. In the midst of the street of it, yes, and on either side of the river, yes, was there the tree of life. You see now, this Amen. river is connected to that other tree mm -hmm. which was there in the garden. Yes, huh? In the midst of it, mm. and on either side of it, yes, <laughs> yes. there was the tree of life. Mm. It's not practical. Mm. Hmm? In the midst of the street of mm. it, yes. the tree of life was there. On either side of the river, mm. the tree of life was there, mm. which bear 12 men of fruits yes. and yielded a fruit every month. Mm. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Of the nations. This river is there, is connected to the tree of life. It is bringing gladness yes. into the city of God. Yes. So the man and his wife, they were never said. Why? Because if you find joy in the Garden of Eden, mm. that joy is emanating from the law of the oh, Lord. God. The word of the Lord yes. is bringing joy. Yes. So when Adam and his wife heard the voice of God, it brought joy and gladness in their heart. Amen. There is nothing that brings joy and gladness than to hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. I don't know. I don't know how you hear the <laughs> voice of the Lord yourself. But as for me, if I am glad or if I have joy inside of me, mm. I've never be glad more than to hear God speaking. You may not know it if you have never experienced it. You may not know it. Panika pano, unza uka gara panika sterek, uchara zunzenika. 
That's why most people they don't want to go to heaven. <laughs> when you think of uh, uh, the parties, when you think of the gigs and all these other things here on earth, you say, Pakuni joy. Hmm? What were you doing in Mbari? Ah, there was joy. Yes. joy. So could most people who, who are very carnal, who have never heard the voice of the Lord, mm. they haven't experienced gladness no. ever since their life. Mm. There is nothing that is joyful or joyous. There is, there is nothing that is glad than this supply Amen. that is coming from this Amen. river. There is a river where God has actually made uh, streams to part from this river yes. to carry water into the city. Yes. And when the city of God receives this water, there is more joy, there is gladness, there is excitement, mm -hmm. there is jubilation, mm -hmm. there is thanksgiving, there is a voice of melody that is there in the, in the garden of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chija ya wafadza, kwa kusina mama mama ama disco waga, Adam na mkazi waga wairiza. Huh? They were just the two of them. But Isaiah is saying, just like the garden of the Lord, yes. where there is full of joy mm -hmm. and gladness, mm -hmm. thanksgiving and voice of melody. Amen. Huh? Amen. Not voices of melody, mm -hmm. but there was the voice, voice of melody. Of melody. Where was that voice coming from? Mm. When Adam was hearing the voice of God, huh? mm. there was mm. gladness in him. Amen. So good. Ausatu afara. Kana usatu anzwa kutawara kwa mwana. Amen. Even when you are listening to the sermon, there are times when you feel so much great joy and gladness yes. inside your spirit. More than what the flesh may think, this is gladness. Kune mufaro uri kopa kunzwa kutawara kwa mwari. Saka Davita jina kuporofita neshe mufaro uno vakuna mwari. Mufaro uyu. Hausi kubapa neshe wawana. Zubatika zipanyamu. You see. Most of the times when you see many happy or, or glad, if you ask them, what are you glad? They are celebrating something that passes away. Yes, yes, yes. Something that perishes with the time. Mm. Yes. Zino zosa zino na kizanyama. Zino zino fura ni uwa. Yes, Pastor, this is just a wonderful message. I'm really, really yes. uh, being blessed and uh, I'm enjoying it. When you're talking about the rivers, Pastor, I'm reminded of... Uh, uh, John chapter 4, when the Lord was talking to the Samaritan woman in verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou, would, thou, would, thou wouldst have asked of him, and would have given thee living water. And verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I give, that I shall give him, shall never thirst. But the water that, shall, that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, spring up into everlasting life. What a privilege it, it is to be a saint in the New Testament where we find this river flowing to go in nature the, the, the sense, the Garden of Eden is fenced, which is protection, it is inhabitant, it, it has got joy and gladness and thanksgiving and the voice of melody, according to Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 to 4. I thank God for this wonderful message, Pastor Paloy. You see, Pastor, that's why I said this message, it will never be explored no. and and and. And finished today. No. We are just probably um, launching this <laughs> this message, Pastor. Yes. Yes. You and, see, and Pastor, you want to come in, Evangel. 
Yes, uh, concerning the joy and gladness uh, in verse 4 of 51, Isaiah. Yes. Uh, I also wanted to bring in verse number 11. Mm -hmm. uh, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return mm -hmm. and come with singing mm -hmm. unto Zion. Mm -hmm. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they shall obtain gladness and joy. Mm. Sorrow and mourning shall flee yeah, away. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you find see. I find that verse, Pastor, uh, making it more clear mm -hmm. even when we talk about the streams that, that makes this city mm -hmm. to be a place of joy. But mm -hmm. we are being taken back to, to the garden. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the garden eastward of Eden it's really, and it was a place of joy as mm -hmm. we see. Mm -hmm. uh, and the return that we are being told there, yes, yes. Uh, it's not really a return that we were in, God, in the garden ourselves, mm -hmm. but we are drawing a picture from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. from, the, from the garden. Mm -hmm. We are drawing a, a, a picture which is talking about the New Testament. Yes. So we coming to the New Testament, it's like people who are returning and the characteristics of the place, there will be joy, yes. there will be singing, yes. sorrow and mourning shall, shall really be a thing of the past. Yes. Why? Because of the redemption from verse number 11. Actually, the whole chapter talks about salvation. Salvation, the sorrows of sin, mm -hmm. the sorrows of everlasting damnation all those shall pass away we are now having a new life which is in Christ Jesus but that joy is as a result of the water that's, that's what made me more glad that every time we listen to the word of God mm -hmm. we are being ministered to uh, that source of our joy that is source of our celebrations mm -hmm. and our gladness Amen. Yes. See, the key word there, Mpangeli, is obtain. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yes. They shall obtain gladness and joy. Gladness and joy. Yes. It's a gift. Yes, mm. a gift. It's mm. coming as a form of a gift. Yes. Yes. Something that they are not going to labor for mm -hmm. is something that they are going to obtain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. Where is this gladness and joy uh, uh, kept? Mm. It is in the river. Um, yes. And we know that this river is carrying water that is as pure as Christ mm -hmm. that is proceeding from the throne of the Lord. It is actually talking about the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. You see, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit bringing water to, to the seat of God. Mm -hmm. But there are going to be streams now which represents the, the ministers of the gospel. Mm -hmm. You yes. see. The ministers of the gospel, each and every stream is carrying water from this river, distributing the water into the seat of God. Mm -hmm. The apostles are coming. According to Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11, he gave some to be uh, apostles and prophets, evangelists, and, and some pastors and teachers. For what reasons? For the edification, for the perfecting of the saints. You see? Yes. For the edification of the body of Christ. So when we receive this word, mm. we are expected to be joyful and to Amen. be glad. Amen. Mm -hmm. it, Amen. It, it, it is an intrinsic feature, characteristic yes. of this word. Yes. 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 Chicha Father Adam named my work in garden. Why wanna my chess we garden? Huh? As they put it these days. Mm. Huh? The dance of, that's what that what brings joy inside of you. Mm. Huh? Mm. Was there WhatsApp in the garden? Ah. Was there TikTok in the garden? <laughs> huh? Was there Facebook in the garden? So how were they enjoying life? Was it a horrible life? That Adam and his wife lived in the garden. No. No. The scripture says the life was full of joy 
and gladness. Yes. It was full of thanksgiving mm. and the voice of melody. Mm. Mm-hmm. What was bringing joy and gladness in Adam and his wife? The voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Kutawara kwa mwari. Ndoko yonza mfaru mawari. But Isusu mazwa anaye. Wanga ni wedu anwana mfaru. Niku nzwa kutawara kwa mwari. And it also resonates with what we are learning these days. Yes. You want to go to heaven, but you don't want to hear <laughs> from the Lord. <laughs> if God speaks, it doesn't bring joy inside of you. Mm. So this is where we are going to end. I, I hope we are going to find time to continue with this message. But if you read Psalm 45 verse 7, you hear about when he was prophesying about um, the spirit of the Lord that was going to be upon our Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? Yes. He, he described the Holy Spirit as the oil of gladness. Yes. Mm-hmm. What did he say? Thou lovest righteousness. Yes. And hatest wickedness. You, 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 you loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, yes. thy God, yes. has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. He has anointed thee. He was talking about Christ. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yes. Christ was anointed with the oil of gladness, of gladness above his fellows. Mm. And even when John was, was, was testifying about our Lord in John chapter 3, let's see here, he confirmed that the Lord had given the Spirit um, to this one Without measure. John chapter 3. Um, let me look at the scripture. Verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. Yes, he was talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. So, you see, when, 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 he, spoke, when he spoke about the spirit that was given to him without measure, mm-hmm. he said... The reason why he has the spirit without measure, it is because for he whom God has sent speaketh yes. the words of God. Mm. For God giveth not, not the spirit by measure unto him. Mm. Mm-hmm. You see, so when, you, when we are talking about the oil of gladness, yes. it is connected to the words of the, of Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 And the question was, why did uh, David describe the Holy Spirit as the oil of gladness? gladness. That was the question. Mm. It is the oil of gladness because when we get interpretation of what God is saying, mm. it brings gladness, gladness to the city. So all those streams that are there in Psalm uh, 45, What are they going to do? They are going to, uh, Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 45 is telling us about the oil of gladness. Yes. But we're talking about the streams that are in Psalm, Psalm 46. Let's go back to Psalm 46 yes. and, and learn about, read that scripture about the streams. Psalm 46 verse uh, Verse 3. Yes. Through the waters there of raw and sorry, though the waters there of raw yes. and be troubled. Yes. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Yes. There is a river. Yes. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God. Yes. The holy place of the tabernacles of the most high. So those streams, there is no way that they are going to make the city glad. Mm-hmm. If the streams are not, or if the streams have not the oil of gladness. of gladness. The difference is, when God gave the oil of gladness, yes, he gave more, he gave without measure to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Why did he receive the, 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 the spirit without measure? Because he was speaking the words of God. Amen. Even these streams, if they are going to make this city glad, mm. 
they will be interpreting the scriptures with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. You see? Yes. So he is the oil of gladness. Why? Why gladness? Mafuta yanun zamfaro. Amen. And it amen. Eh. Maharashi Muzodza. Aga Muzodza. Kukura ama zat. Yes. You see? Yes. Above his fellows. So it's the oil of gladness. So what brings joy in the garden? It is the presence of the river that carries water. Huh? Mm. The presence of the river that carries water. So when Adam and his wife continue to have the supply of water, mm. in fact, when they continue to hear the voice of God, mm. that, brought, that brought joy and gladness in their heart. So this is where we are going to end, my brethren. I hope we are going to have another chance where we are going to have maybe a continuation of this. <laughs> we want to explore all those other items that we have discovered. They are enshrined in the garden. What is it about the garden that God always refers back to us to say, go back to the garden? And remember very well that when God put the man into the garden, he said, I want you to till the ground. Mm. Yes. And when Ezekiel was prophesying, he said, God is going to till that mm. desolate. Yes. Mm. So there is something about tilling the ground in the garden mm. which should also be explored in our next sermon. What is it in the New Testament? How is then the man who is our Lord Jesus Christ, supposed to also till the New Testament. Mm. So many things that are there in the garden which we may also want to know and learn as the New Testament church. Mm. But for today, yes, yes. Yes, we have come to an end. I know we have traveled so long journey Three segments that we had for the photo Uru. Yes. I, I know uh, the Lord has actually blessed us. So many uh, powerful teachings that we have received today. Amen. And we are so thankful to the Lord. And remember the other characteristics of the garden. It is always filled with thanksgiving. Yes. And we are going to see it uh, the next time when we are going to learn the word of God. So we really thank God for where he has taken us. Uh, we thank the Lord. Let me just pray before you leave. Lord, I thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your message so that we may learn what brings joy inside of our hearts. We thank you, Lord, when you continue to speak to us, that brings joy inside our hearts. We really thank you, Lord. You sacrificed, sacrificed your life for us. We are here because of your sacrifice. You died for us on the cross. You actually atoned us from our sin through your perfect sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for this whole day that you have been with us and every activity we have been, we have been witnessing in the house, the powerful testimonies which all give credit to you. We shall continue to thank you, Lord. We thank you for those who are sick that you have healed in their bodies. So many testimonies that we are going to hear through the preaching of the word. So many things that are going to happen in people's lives because of this word. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you continue to supply to us. Lord, we thank you even for the dedicated service that you continue to teach us as you are going to guide us as we continue to learn from you. Lord, we thank you. You want us to have pure hearts and a good conscience, a pure conscience to serve you, Lord. We know that this conscience we can only obtain through the washing of the water of the word. Thank you, Lord, for everything. We thank you for all the ministers that you have given us who teach us this word. We continue to be nourished and we continue to praise you and to thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we thank the Lord. Let's meet on our future services.